hearing of the uh, Judiciary Committee Subcommittee on Privacy, Technology, and Law will come to order. We are here today to examine uh, persistent cybersecurity concerns in the data broker industry. This is not the first time our subcommittee has gathered to do so. After a cybersecurity breach last August, we held a hearing to ask the question, how secure is consumers' data in the hands of data brokers? The answer, well, not very secure. The data broker industry immediately responded by committing to take seriously uh, security issues and pledging to dedicate resources toward data protection measures. Uh, yet here we are, two years later, in the wake of what we now know is the largest, largest breach ever of uh, private consumer data. data. Uh, we're trying to figure out how it happened once again. It happened because data brokers have created an industry-wide culture that appears not to prioritize the security of consumers' information. Traditional data brokers, those who make a profit from buying and selling data to other companies, have very little direct interaction with consumers. They have very little incentive to earn or maintain consumers' trust. So resources are invested in increasing profits and security is apparently treated as an expenditure that ought to be minimized. This, of course, is unacceptable. Today, this subcommittee uh, continues its efforts to monitor the data broker industry uh, by asking another question. How do data brokers prioritize the security of consumers' data? We have now seen over and over how easy it is for hackers to breach uh, data broker systems due to a lack of proper security. Now, last month, Equifax announced that hackers breached its internal databases and stole unprecedented amounts of consumer information. Hackers were able to access Equifax's database through a software vulnerability that Equifax failed to resolve despite having been alerted to the vulnerability and its potential for criminal exploitation by DHS. The hackers continuously attacked uh, Equifax's systems undetected for a period of over four months. By the time Equifax took any steps to stop the attacks, 145 and a half million Americans' personal identifying information had been stolen, including the data of nearly 3 million Americans, or I'm sorry, 3 million Arizonans. Uh, we will now further ask, what did Equifax do to prioritize the security of consumer data? We will hear today from Rick Smith, former chairman and CEO of Equifax. I will let uh, Mr. Smith describe the remaining details uh, of the breach in his testimony. These de details are important. Uh, we must examine them if we're going to learn from this incident. I'm also pleased to welcome to the committee uh, Jamie Winterton from Arizona State University and Tyler Moore from the University of Tulsa, who will be on the second panel. It's my hope that this hearing will finally provide answers to the subcommittee questions uh, regarding industry-wide security practices and identifying ways in which data brokers can truly prioritize the security of sensitive consumer data.